This is the Samsung Galaxy A16 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray will need to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the plastic back plate or back cover. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Now there are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws have been removed, the flex cable for the fingerprint reader can be disconnected from the main board. Now a pry tool needs to be ran along the edges of the back housing to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. There are some antenna flex cables on the top, as well as the NFC antenna. Looking at the other side, we can see additional antenna flex cables around the border, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard. As for the blue coaxial cable, that can also be disconnected by just popping it off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we see a 5 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel primary, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here, and the secondary microphone is on the top. On the other side, we can see the SIM and memory card reader, the 13 megapixel front facing camera, an ambient light sensor, as well as heat transfer tape over the back shield. Once the heat transfer tape has been removed, we see thermal paste on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. When it comes to removing the screen, you basically have to remove the back plate, the screws in the back housing, you then disconnect the flex cable which is connecting the screen and the subboard to the main board, and then peel off the flex cable for the screen from the subboard, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. As for replacing the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off.
This is the 5000 mAh battery. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard or charger port board, we can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port, and next to that is a primary microphone. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the bottom speaker, which is located on the other side. To replace either of those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. The flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons is located on this side, and that can be gently peeled off from the frame. The earpiece speaker is located here, which is also held down with some adhesive. Again, to remove it, just apply some heat and pry it off. There are two liquid damage indicator stickers. One is located here on the frame underneath the sim reader, and another one over here on the bottom of the midframe. There are also two thermal pads on the midframe to help transfer heat. So on this phone, if you were to accidentally insert your SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you won't need to worry since both of the filters as well as the microphones are seated above the holes and they won't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.